I'm Robert J. Spinner, a neurosurgeon and a member of the brachial plexus team at the Mayo Clinic. It's an honor to make a few brief introductory comments regarding our series of videos on this subject. The management of patients with post-traumatic brachial plexus injuries is complex. It starts with a systematic evaluation. Only after that can one proceed to decision-making and treatment. The evaluation is based on four pillars, a focused history, a thorough and reproducible physical examination, electrodiagnostic tests, and imaging studies. History should focus on the mechanism of the trauma, associated injuries and treatment, timings of the onset of the neurologic deficit following the injury, extent of the motor and sensory loss and pain, as well as changes in each since the initial injury. A comprehensive physical examination is then performed. Examination should lead to an accurate localization, such as the presence of preganglionic or postganglionic or lower motor and or upper motor neuron findings affecting the supra or infraclavicular plexus or terminal branches and a determination of the extent of the injury, namely complete paralysis or partial injury with or without recovery. Different physician and patient reported outcome measurements should be documented. One needs to use strict definitions of grading systems, such as the British MRC related to muscle testing, several words of caution regarding potential pitfalls, Examiners need to avoid misusing grading outcomes, such as ignoring the fact that MRC3 needs to be full active range of motion through a complete arc of active motion, or that MRC4 for biceps function is not 90 degrees of active elbow flexion against gravity with some resistance. They must be familiar with difficulty assessing muscles such as the rhomboids, differentiating between contributions of the deltoid and supraspinatus when testing shoulder abduction, recognizing trick motions, and understanding that an advancing Tunnell sign over time does not necessarily equate with clinical recovery. Careful recording and easy access of your scores on serial examinations is critical. You are only as good as your data. These data points are necessary to compare results consistently in your own clinic, to communicate accurately with patients and physicians, to prognosticate, and ultimately to improve and transform care. Physical examination is complemented, not replaced, by protocolized electrodiagnostic testing and high-resolution imaging studies. The foundation is strongest with all four pillars. Patients with brachial plexus injuries should be managed collaboratively, cooperatively, and congenially by a multidisciplinary team. In my humble opinion, no single individual knows it all or can do it all. Care is optimized by constant dialogue amongst examiners, including surgeons, neurologists, radiologists, therapists, etc., to make sure that the right questions are being answered and the right nerves and muscles are being tested. Finally, the best results of brachial plexus surgery are achieved by combining intellectual prowess in the clinic with technical skills and innovation in the operating room. On behalf of my colleagues and friends, Alan Bishop, Alex Shin, and Nick Poulos in the Division of Hand Surgery, I thank you for exploring and watching these videos.